even in prayer. Uh, all right. We should remember that God sends adversities yes. as well as pleasant things. Uh -huh. All right. Mm -hmm. We are now living in a complaining age. Yes, we are. All right. Nobody seems to be satisfied. Right. 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 Even when we are trying to get ourselves involved in a relationship, uh -huh. he's either too tall or too short. All right. He's either too light or too dark. Right. He's either... I ain't going no further. <laughs> <laughs> Complaining is not a new situation in this world. The king, David, he had prayed a complaining prayer for his child, but was disappointed because David had a child, and he wanted the child to get well. Uh -huh. And he took off his garments, and he stretched out by the child, asking God to heal. All right. But God said, no, I'm going to take this one. All right. uh -huh. And then David got up and began to rejoice. And they said, what's wrong with you that you're rejoicing? He said, I cannot bring him back to me. Uh -huh. He said, but I now see that I can get me straight uh -huh. so that I can go be with him. Yeah. All right. Somebody ought to hear me today. All right. All right. We've got some people that have passed away. Yes, Lord. We wanted them to be healed. Yes, that's but God right. said no. All right. So now we have to get ourselves straight. Amen. So that we can now go be with them. Amen. Now, David had complained in his prayer, but was disappointed. The prophet Paul prayed a complaining prayer uh -huh. because he asked God to remove the thorn in his flesh. Amen. Well, well. But he was disappointed. There's a whole lot of thorns. Yes. Uh -huh. And I'm not talking about sticker briars either. Yes. Now, when folks are from West Virginia, they know what sticker briars are. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. When you're from the country, you know what sticker briars are. Yeah. Now, I know some of you all that may be from the city, you don't know what sticker briars are. Uh -huh. I'm talking about thorns on the bush. Yeah. Yeah. Every beautiful rose right. comes from some thorns. So in order to get the rose, you also have to know it's some thorns there. Uh -huh. I'm talking relationship talk. All right, all right. So no matter how beautiful she is, you, you guys listen to me in the back. You better be listening. God trying to tell you something. No matter how beautiful she is, uh, stay with her long enough, you'll discover that she has some thorns. Amen. Amen. And to the ladies of the house, uh -huh. doesn't matter how uh, he looks or how he fits your uh, list of desires, doesn't matter every man, every woman, has some thorns. Lord, I hear two amen. Lord, have mercy. Now, the whole of your life experience is under the direction of God. God treats us in various ways. He sends both evil upon us and good. Now, seems to us Sometimes he seems to send more evil to one, somebody else, and then you begin to look at yourself. Uh -huh. yeah. Say, well, he needs to send me more good. Uh -huh. Well, when you're looking around, you don't know what that person went through. Uh -huh. Did you hear what I said? Uh -huh. You don't know what that person's life is like. You have no idea what that person's life is like. Yeah. All right. You only get to see 
They're outside of the Cheerios box. You have no idea what the Cheerios are like inside. Am I right about it? Those Cheerios, they had to be uh, mashed. They had to be put in a hot oven. Am I right? And then all you concerned about is grabbing the Cheerios box, pouring them out in, putting some milk in there, and put a little sugar on it, and some fruit or something like that. And you just love Cheerios to death. Oh, yeah. And some of y'all eat oatmeal, but you don't know what that oatmeal been through. See, you have no idea. When you look at another person's life, and you think that you have them all wrapped up, you have no idea. So it's when I come to church and I'm praising God and acting just wild and crazy. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I'm not ashamed. All right. I'm not ashamed. Because right. the Lord has been blessing me all the days of my life. Amen. And I didn't say that I had been good all the days of my life. Right. I didn't say that I had been holy all the days of my life. Right. But I can say the Lord has made a way for me. Oh, I wish I had some help. Amen. <coughs> Jeremiah was a member of the Levitical priesthood. Uh -huh. He was ordained from birth Amen. to be a prophet. All right. All I right. want you to get that. Right. He was ordained from birth to be a prophet. It's right. uh -huh. so a whole lot of times we look at little children and we want to put them in a classification or a category. Well, you're only looking at the outside of the box. You have no idea what God has planned for that person's life. Yes. Right. And some of you that are old, you think that, well, God's finished with me. There's not nothing I can do now. Uh -huh. I might as well just go on, sit back, kick back, and drink my chair talk. Uh -huh. And relax. <laughs> but you see, God has plans for you Amen. that you do not know. All you have to do is ask of him. Uh -huh. Try to please him. Yes. And God will reveal himself to you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, Amen. he was a youth when his call came. The Lord told him not to be afraid, for I am with you. Uh -huh. The Lord never sends a person out to serve without going with him. So for 40 years, Jeremiah stood before the nation as a witness for God. So when Jerusalem was under siege, he was God's spokesman. He was a good soldier in the army of the Lord. All believers should strive to be good soldiers. The prophet's mission was to warn the people of both good and bad. When the king of Syria went up and took over Samaria. There was a great famine. Yeah. And you can see that people were put up for sale. Food ran out. Uh -huh. And that's another thing you have to understand. Is that oftentimes when you think that you don't have, you've got one pain. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people that would love to have your pain. Yes. All right. Because they've got 15 pains. They'll, they would love to have your one pain. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh yeah. You say, I've got a child that won't behave. Well, there's some mothers that have five children. Uh -huh. And they won't behave. Uh -huh. I wish I had some help in here. Uh -huh. I can tell right now the ushers need to pass y'all out some Cheerios or something. It, it ain't happening in here. Elisha was the prophet uh -huh. of that time. The people had a valid reason to complain. In the midst of the famine, the king of Israel was passing by and a woman cried out to him saying, help my lord, O king. The king asked, what aileth thee? She said, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him today and on tomorrow we'll eat your son tomorrow. Uh -huh. So they boiled that woman's son and ate him and then on the next day when it was that mother's turn, to turn her son in for them to boil uh -huh. so that they would have something to eat, that woman refused. Uh -huh. right. So you never know what people have gone through. Amen. So 
It might look like sometimes people come to church and they act crazy with their praise. I don't care what you think of my praise. You have not walked one mile in my shoes. I don't care what you think about the goodness of the Lord as it has come upon my life. You got to tell the devil, behave yourself. Get back off of me. I need to praise the Lord. I need to lift him up. saying to Judah, Judah's one of the tribes that God of, of, of Israel, uh -huh. and he complained. You remember when he was put in stocks in the dungeon after he'd gotten out of confinement, he said, I will not make mention of God nor speak anymore in his name. Uh -huh. Oh, there are times when you have been faithful singing in the choir, you've been faithful serving in the church, you've been a member of the church, right. you have served God and you've done so well serving him and then all of a sudden Satan sends something your way uh -huh. and it causes great grief in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit and you look up toward heaven and say God why me uh -huh. oh God why me and then God why now uh -huh. after I've been faithful to you all these years Go ahead, preacher. why yeah. are you coming to me like this now Go ahead, so all of a sudden it was that that he began to uh, uh, complain. Yeah. So all of a sudden, he began to look around and say, God, I need you to give me an answer. I need for you to uh, uh, let me know, am I still all right with you? Yeah. Yeah. I need you to know that God has caused some things in my life yeah. and in your life also. Yeah. God has caused some things to bring you headaches. And God has caused some things to bring you heartache. Uh, because usually he's pulling something out of your life that has no place being in your life. I wish I had a witness here. Sometimes we get away with a whole lot of gambling. You don't have to go to the gambling den to gamble. You can gamble trying to get into a relationship that you should not be in in the first place. I wish I had somebody to help me here because uh, you had no business uh, trying to take somebody else's stuff. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hire somebody to say man. Not amen in this church. I'm gonna get with the deacons. We're gonna hire somebody to say amen. amen. You gamble because uh, you throw in your lot over this way when you need it to be throwing it over here with the Lord. But uh, you gamble and you lost. Now here you come with your eyes all red and your heart. Jeremiah said he said I won't speak his name anymore because I'm tired of being the one that's always uh, not receiving what I think I ought to receive from God Jeremiah went home and sat down and crossed his legs and folded his arms I need to tell you sometimes that you think you can run away from God, but God is in every place you go. God is in every place that you go. He's in the good place, and he's also in the bad place. Because he's watching over you. He gave his word and said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. So what happened to Jeremiah? He said, while I was sitting there one day, he said, I started looking back over my life. 
and I realized that God was already taking care of me. On my bad days, he was already there. Because when I was down, he came by to lift me up. He said, I sat there and thought about the goodness of God. He said, and I realized my bones started to get hot. He said, it feels like fire. When the devil says you would die. God's word has power, I tell you. God's word came out of his mouth. He didn't hire uh, somebody to draw up a world and a universe. He said he spoke those things into existence. That's the word of God. And uh, when he is tempted to complain, uh, David complained when his son died. The children of Israel complained when they got hungry in the wilderness. Gideon complained in the book of Judges. Gideon said, if the Lord be with us, then why is all of this befallen us? But Jeremiah said, when my bones got hot, he said, I couldn't sit here anymore. I had to get up and go back to doing what God had allowed me to do. God wants somebody to be a witness for him. God wants somebody to just brag on him. You don't have to brag on yourself. You don't have to talk about your new how to do. You don't have to talk about the new car you're going to get. You don't have to talk about the new house you're going to live in. You don't have to talk about the new things that's coming into your life. But God said, brag on him. Brag on the Lord. And he said, it'll be all right. Most of us have asked God at some time, why? Why me, Lord? Why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to be so sad? Why am I having so much trouble? Why is life so unkind to me? Why is it that others seem to get along better than me? Then the poet said, we'll find out by and by. Oh, when the morning comes.
say about it? David said, I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me. Yeah, let me stop complaining and be thankful. When we go to bed at night, we ought to thank him for another day's journey. When we get up in the morning, we ought to wake up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You led me through the darkness of the night when I couldn't help myself. So I say thank you Lord Don't you know there were times When some of my friends came around They said Staples Why are you still down here in West Virginia And I say but the Lord He told me to stay down here God's got people down here God needs to tell you what to do He said Yeah. 
like that pray for me. Well, they prayed something quite wicked too, but they really prayed for me. Yeah, I got, they got grace. Quite wicked did. Thank you. But I got amazing grace. That's the special kind. Anybody in here know anything about amazing grace? Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I already come. But grace has brought me safe. That's all. And grace will lead me on. Move off of complaining street. Move over to thankful avenue. Come on, put our hands
Amen. Amen. You ain't got to raise your hand. We don't see you. You ain't got to raise your hand. We don't see you. Please get, get home. We get home. I saw you raising your hand. What are you talking about? Sometimes it's me. Amen. He said, when you love me, love ye one another as I have loved you. Amen. God has loved us through some tough stuff. Amen. Have you done it? And he still loves us. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Is there somebody that will come to Jesus this morning? Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Today may be the last day. Some of us. Do you have a church home? Come on. You can call this home. Call this home. It's with me, your family. If 
by yourself. Tell them how the Lord has brought you through. Tell them that the Lord is a forgiving God. Tell them that the Lord loves you.
Brother Sheik, I'm glad that you came back. I know she probably pursuing stardom down there in Miami. And you could have made a way down there. God bless you. But I saw that, you know, scratches on your neck. What's this? This is Nate had you by the neck pulling your neck in West Virginia. Come on, Michael. Pull boy. 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 Pull and then we're going to get on the band. I need a drive. I've got one drive. And I need another drive. Okay, we got one right here. Do I have another drive? Do I have another drive? Do I have another drive? Okay. Well, we have, we're going to the van. I'll have to send us a drive. <laughs> okay. Thank all of you for coming. Pray for us. All right. The last thing we do, the last thing we do, come up and help me, Brand. I see you trying to jump down. Get just like the grown folks. <laughs> Come on, Brandon. Help. Come on, any young, youngsters in the back, gonna help me sing. Yeah, you come on. All right, all right. Come on here, little lady. There we go. Yeah. I got a tough group with me now. Brandon, you coming? Oh, you'll get no more ice cream this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're just about to finish. Okay, now we're going to stand. Look, look, always turn and look toward the feet. Okay, stand the shoulder to shoulder. Okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> skids, 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 skids. Okay. Come on, man. There we go. There you go. That's good. Okay, say amen. 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 All right. Now, we're going to sing. Here we go. Give, give me a call. Ready? Hey. Mama. You don't say
continue to give you peace. Bless them, O oh God, as they go back to their several homes, destinations, and occupations. Keep them, Lord, until you come back.